Undoubtedly the biggest change to my ski gear this year was my boots. For the past few years, I have been using the Del Bello Krypton 110 Flex boot. This is a three-piece boot, 110 Flex, obviously. This year, I changed over to the Solomon S Pro 120, which is a two-piece boot with the booster strap and a few other things. So there wasn't necessarily like an exact reason why I wanted to change new boots, but the kind of the long and short of it was I just felt like I was lacking performance in my boots. I feel like of my entire ski gear, the weakest part was my boots. And just throughout the, the years, as I skied almost 100 days last year and about uh, 40 days the year before, I just felt like one, the 110 Flex was too soft. And I just felt like the three piece boot might not be the best um, construction for me with how I like to ski. So this year I, I started to look into different boots and I stumbled upon the Solomon S Pro, which is kind of amongst one of the, the higher end boots. I got them completely custom fitted to my foot, which included custom footbeds, molded shell. I got all my boot work done by a dude at Cole Sports. His real name is Scott Dudevore. I think he just goes by dude at this point. He is, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best boot fitter in the Park City area. He's just worked with the freestyle team and Olympians and stuff like that really since the early 2000s. So he actually was featured in a YouTube video that I will link um, about sort of like finding the perfect ski stance and how his philosophy, like how, how he goes about his philosophy when fitting boots and stuff like that. So this is by no way like affiliated with Cole Sports. They're not sponsoring me. They don't do any of that stuff. But for those who are interested and those who ask if you need any sort of boot work, whether you are, you know, an absolute like pro skier or you're just sort of someone new getting to the sport, um, the people at Cole Sports will definitely hook you up. Go find dude, tell him that like Lucas Catania from YouTube, all that sort of stuff and he'll take care of you. I had my initial boot fit done early October before the season started and it was honestly a really cool experience. I never had a custom fitted boot before, the whole process of making footbeds and um, letting the, you know, baking the, the shell and all that sort of stuff and just allowing the 90 minutes or whatever, 60, 90 minutes that it takes to actually get these boots to really mold to my feet. The only thing that we did sort of on top of that was might be kind of hard to tell, but I ended up sort of punching out the top part of my left boot. I felt like there was um, kind of a pressure point right here where the buckle was. So we ended up just sort of lifting that up a little bit, but for the most part, you know, custom footbeds heated the shell and there's only really so much you can do with the initial boot fit. And dude was just like, you have to go ski them for one, two weeks, whatever it is, um, and just see how they actually break into your foot and what happens when you actually load them up. Because when I was standing there in the boot shop or the ski shop, like the boots felt great. I was like, wow, these are you know, they're tight, all that sort of stuff, but they didn't really hurt me anywhere. So you really can only find out so much until you actually start to like load the boot up and really put some like G's into the boot, into your feet, on your edges, all that sort of stuff. So after that, headed out to Colorado basically for about two weeks and I only brought this boot. I didn't even bring my other boot, my other pair of Del Bello. So it's like, I really had no option. Like those had to work. And this is kind of where, if you've been following along, all this sort of stuff sort of came out. So to be honest, the first like three to four days with the boots were like very, very painful. Very first day, my right foot would literally fall asleep in the lift line on opening day. Like I literally couldn't feel my foot. So I'd have to unbuckle my bottom buckles. And that's something I never was used to. Like I know people who, you know, are always unbuckling into the lift line. Like I never had to do that. I remember I'd literally like stand at the top of the runs, just like putting weight on my poles to take the weight off my feet because my feet were, were kind of, hurt, were just hurting. Like they just felt like there was so much pressure on my feet. But at the same time, I kind of knew that these first days are, are as small as the boot's gonna be, right? A boot is only gonna pack out. A boot is only gonna get bigger. It's much easier to make the boot bigger than it is to try to make the boot smaller. So I knew it was just kind of part of this performance orientated boot fit with a brand new pair of two piece boots. But I kept mentioning sort of like this heel lift. I thought I was dealing with heel lift where like my heel was literally coming out of the boot. There there was obviously a lot of opinions coming in of like, oh, it's bad technique, it's bad boot fitting, the boots just aren't right for you, you have to get rid of them, get new boots. Like, I honestly just sort of nurtured myself through it with some ice, I would take some Motrin before I went out. And I just sort of had this like optimism that the boots are gonna get better, they just seem to be broken in, like they don't, they don't break in overnight. The most pain I had with the boots was walking around, walking to the lifts and stuff like that and standing. Once I actually started skiing, the boots really didn't hurt. So it's like this weird sort of dichotomy of like, yeah, it sucks to walk to the list, but once I start skiing, 
like I don't really have pain. And on top of that, I could actually feel the potential of the boots, like the amount of power I could put into the boots, like right as I sort of set that edge with my ARVs, like then I could just basically get into a squat and just push forward and the boot just like, the input was so much more precise than what I was used to with my three-piece Del Bellows at 110 flex. A lot of times with these, I feel like I could touch my shin to my to my toe and I just they just felt soft. They just felt like they didn't like have what I was looking for. And I noticed right away with these is like, it just feels a lot more like a sports car where like I put the input in and the boot responds right away. And it almost feels like a linear sort of progression where with these Del Bellows, it felt more like, I don't know, for example, this is just arbitrary. I had to put like the number 20 in to get 10 out on the boot. So it was like this weird sort of scaled output that the boots gave me where with these Solomons, I feel like I put 20 in, I get 20 out right away. So it's much easier to sort of control the power that I'm putting into the boot. So that's kind of why I was excited. I was like, yeah, my feet kill, but the man, they're like so awesome once I start actually skiing and ripping. And it's just like having that sort of light at the end of the tunnel is what made me, yeah, why I had so much fun, I think, skiing, but also like, I don't want to just give up on these boots. The audio might sound a little bit different now because my lab mic died halfway through this, whatever. Basically with a week left of my Colorado trip, I made an appointment with Dude to get these sorted out when I get back to Utah. Right when I got to to cool sport and saw a dude i told him about the bump on my heel and he knew right away it's called Haglund's bump it's actually like a bone deformity people get when they wear tight shoes or something like that it's basically rubs on the back of your heel and just causes irritation um, and forms like a bone spur it doesn't really go away ever and we ended up punching out the back of the boot you can kind of see where that mark is right there so there's like literally a bump on both both of my boots. We took lipstick and put it on the bump on my heel. And then I went into the shell and sort of moved my foot back and forth to mark where the bump is in relevance to the shell. Then he took them back and sort of expanded it and punched it out as you can see. And this is sort of like the first step. If this doesn't work and make them feel better, you can actually mess with the liner a little bit, cut out parts of the liner, put a softer material in there. But right now I didn't really want to cut into the integrity of the liner. I'm hopeful this will work and solve the problem. That was kind of like the biggest adjustment that we made was just punching out this backside. Another thing we did was he he reevaluated my stance in the boots where I kind of stood in there, sort of like was in that kind of attack aggressive standpoint or position. He looked at just how I was in the boots and he saw that I was very, very tight on both sides of my right boot. And I told him how I felt a lot of sort of um, pressure on this foot and oftentimes during the day i'd find myself having to unbuckle these bottom two buckles just to relieve the pressure that i felt and he said kind of checks out and he just barely sort of widened this the the bottom part of the boot again you don't want to ever go like too big it's easier to like make a boot bigger than it is make it smaller so that was another adjustment that we did with just the right foot only the left foot hasn't been giving me issues and lastly if you guys really been following along you'll know that i lost this screw in the boot like three four days into the trip and i went all kind of all over silverthorne and frisco and no one had the screw went in there showed dude and dude had literally hundreds of this screw exactly he has like this huge spare parts kit so just just interesting to see the difference in a place like park city compared to colorado when it comes to some boot parts like this so dude hooked it you know got the screw all ready to go he tightened everything up and just made sure that nothing was going to back out of the <laughs> the boot since then but it's important to note that at the end of the 14 days like that final day at copper mountain i was feeling much better with the boot so i'm hopeful that the minor adjustments that we did make to the boot are kind of going to kind of be what we need to really make these boots like 100 percent ready to rip so, so that was what i did with dude this past week just some minor things but again that's kind of like where we're at with the fitting process <music> That was really cool about spending time with dude was I, I really picked his brain on like the small minute things that I think kind of get you that final five, 10% when it comes to boots. And there was a lot of comments about like how to buckle your boots. Literally, do you go top to bottom? Do you go bottom to top and, and stuff like that. So I wanted to just get dude, dude's experience and expertise with these. Ultimately, he said when it comes to buckling top to bottom or bottom to top, it kind of comes down to personal preference. It doesn't that's not as big of a deal. He said, really, at the end of the day, you kind of buckle in at the bottom. Then by the time you get up to the top, you're supposed to kind of reposition and, and rebuckle anyways. But he said, what's more important is knowing what buckles to like really crank down on and which buckles to just kind of leave snug. He said the top two buckles are by far the most important ones to make sure that they are very, very tight. He said the bottom two, you don't, you want them to be tight, obviously, but you don't want to have that feeling of where you're like, you know, you're like, can like barely get it, get it down. 
you just kind of want something that's like pretty nice and easy that's just gonna hold your foot. He said, if these, these two buckles are too tight, this is what's gonna give you a lot of pressure and essentially um, lose the feeling in your foot, then you can't really ski. If you can't feel your feet, it's hard to like actually to ski, you know? So he also kind of mentioned the booster strap, whether it's being above the shell or like in between the shell, he said booster strap designed it to be underneath. But he said that ultimately, again, at the end of the day, like it's kind of all personal preference. And that's kind of the deal with like anything in skiing. It's like, if you have something that works for you, then it works for you. Like there's not necessarily like a right or wrong way to do things. But what was really cool was spending time with them and just like, we literally went through every single buckle of like, and so we adjusted my buckles to be like, okay, that's like a good tension on the boot, you know? This one, I think I go to my second buckle here. That's a good tension. So it was just, it was really neat to just sit there with dude and literally go through the tension of each buckle to maximize sort of what the tightness of my boot should be like, right? It's like one thing to get your boot fitted properly, but then it's another thing to like actually make sure they're tightened correctly. <laughs> So moving forward with the boots, I think there's some potential like upgrades I might do with the boots. The first one being boot heaters because the boot is a lot tighter fitting. It's just sort of natural that your feet might get a little colder than like before. So I could see myself making the investment in the boot heaters. It's basically just like kind of think of like radiant floor heating, just sort of like little fingers that are gonna go underneath the insole in the toe. Cause that's really the only part that gets cold. And then, you know, there's sort of like whatever wire or circuit and then a battery will sit on the back of the boot here to X will power the heater. So I haven't made any decision yet. I kind of want to see like what is actually gonna happen with the boots, but that is something I could see myself investing in for the future. And then I did talk to them about zip fit liners. There was a lot of people who, you know, were like, obviously really into zip fit liners and, and I talked to dude about it. And he was honestly kind of like 50 fifties. Like, you know, they're, they're definitely like a good product, but he knows people who, who loved them and he knows people who bought them and were just kind of like unimpressed and didn't really, didn't really like them. So I'm not ruling them out by any chance, but I want to get, I just feel like I haven't really got these dialed in yet. So before I go spend like more money on the liners than I did on these boots, I'm just going to sort of focus on trying to dial these in. And then lastly, I think just upgrading the flex in general. I mean, that would obviously be a whole new boot, but I originally wanted to go with the 130 flex, but just the way I got these boots, they didn't have the 130s in stock in my size. So I'm just kind of already feeling me really powering through these boots, especially as my feet feel better. So I could see myself in the future upgrading to a 130, possibly maybe like with the new BOA system, but just sort of some things that I'm gonna keep on my radar moving forward. But really excited. I hope like these little changes make the feet feel a lot better. I've also taken two, three days off at this point, which is just something I wasn't doing. So. We're gonna find out this week and I'll keep everyone updated. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, if you're in the Park City area, I think Cole Sports has just some of like the best knowledge, whether you're a professional or a beginner on sort of getting you dialed for this season. And thanks for watching. As I say, all of you guys in the next one from uh, Park City opening day. Take it easy, fam. Peace out.